Hello, hello. Welcome to season one, episode four of Ask the Regulator. Today we're talking about all about a cannabis application overview. My name is Katie Cravens. I am your host at Ask the Regulator, powered by Build My SOP. Hi, my name is Tom Ohan. Uh, I have been in public safety for 30 years, starting as a paramedic, working through law enforcement, and now I work for Build My SOP. Our guest speaker today is Lael McFatridge. She has built her uh, cannabis career in the industry beginning in 2011, so she's way before you and I, Tom. I really appreciate you taking the time today. And um, as you said, I'm currently a cannabis consultant, technical writer, and realtor based in Colorado. So I've written or worked on applications in more than 20 states. Uh, So I have a lot of experience seeing um, uh, the differences from different types of cannabis business applications, both state to state and city to city. And while you know each application has its own unique qualities, there are some best practices and there are some common things that we're going to see over and over again. Um, of course, most applicants aren't going to apply over and over again. They're usually gonna choose to establish a cannabis business in a single location at a time. But if they have desire uh, to grow and become either a multi-state operator or even just to have a footprint beyond a single state, um, they can definitely be impacted by the differences between the process uh, from one location to another. I get this question a lot when it comes to application and plans, operation mm-hmm. plans, security plans, right? And I like to mm-hmm. describe to people that, you know, those plans are the what, and the SOPs are the how. Absolutely. So in your work, Lael, you write the what. I this write the what. what you're doing. And in our work, we define the how. This is how we're going to be doing the what. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best analogy I've come up with for people to understand the real difference between an operation plan and the procedure as to how that plan gets executed. You can use Build My SOP for your task management, as well as for storing all those documents as you work on your application. So one of the things we had mentioned before is that- There's always a part two. Yeah, that's true. I think this could be a part two. is that application timelines can vary as well. So they can sometimes be as short as about 30 days. I don't think I've ever seen anything that's quote unquote less than 30 days Mm -hmm. uh, from announcement from a regular. That would be crazy. That would be unbearable. That sounds like your own, like you're just setting, the state is setting themselves up Up for for failure. Yeah. You are responsible. (laughs) Yeah. Didn't you just invest $6 million in this? Why would you not know every nook and cranny of your $6 million? Because I guarantee if it was invested anywhere else, you would know everything about that. Absolutely. So why is this different for operators and owners? I don't, I don't understand. I, yes, we're, you're entrusting us to, to do what we do as the experts. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you are the one responsible on paper, legally, Absolutely. Wouldn't you want to just oversee it a little bit? Our number one suggestion, like we said, if there is no other takeaway from today's podcast, our number one suggestion to prospective applicants uh, is take a job in a regulated cannabis business for 90 days to six months or longer before you apply to be an owner. Yes. If you want to be an owner, I don't care if you have an impeccable resume and outstanding credentials and 30 years of work in corporate America or Fortune 500s or other very successful it's businesses. A different game. You, you may have owned many multiple businesses in a variety of industries. Those things help you to be more successful when you take this on. But if you don't be, you know, take a role as a trimmer or a bud tender or something somewhat entry level or even in management for some short period of time to understand what it's like to, like we said, peel the curtain back and be behind Familiarize yourself with what a daily operation looks like and do it for more than just Absolutely. the day that you're there and you're all, mm-hmm. you know, glitter and it, eye it's and a tour. With it yeah. and get into it, get into, you know, the different uh, aspects, get into the different personality traits you're gonna deal with, the managerial roles, get into Absolutely. it before you make Absolutely. a decision to pursue it with millions of dollars. Absolutely. We I always say co- SOPs are the least sexy side of cannabis, but someone has- So, so are contracts, so are real estate contracts. <laughs> yep, that that being said, it does feel like I sort of wield a powerful weapon in how I'm able to influence 
uh, the ability for my clients to become operators and to become those good neighbors. So if, if, if the contribution I can make is making sure that really high quality operators enter the market, um, that's something, like you said, that I care a great deal about and am passionate about, both for the end consumer, for communities at large, and for the reputation of the regulated industry as a whole. That, to me, is how we continue to grow and evolve. And so long as I can be a positive voice for women, for minorities, for queer people, for lots of different folks who are marginalized in this space, um, I will continue to be proud to do so.